Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So a couple months ago, I posted this video basically explaining that of the Coffee Lake CPUs, two of them I was very impressed with. That was the i3-8100 and the i5-8400. Now today, Intel has released their H300 series boards and the B300 series boards. Basically, these are more budget-friendly boards compared to the Z370 that we've had previously. And in that video, I went ahead and said, pairing those CPUs with budget-friendly motherboards would make them extremely appealing to gamers. And that day has finally come. Unfortunately for the i3-8100, AMD released the Ryzen 3 2200G, a quad-core CPU with integrated Vega graphics. For that $100 to $120 price point, this thing is just a much better value. The Core i5-8400, however, is still a very appealing option. And now with budget-friendly motherboards, it's time for this thing to really shine. Looking at the H310 motherboards, they start at only $57.99, with shipping about $60. And the B360 board starting at $69.99, or about $75 if you include the shipping. Now over here, I have the i5-8400 priced with the ASRock motherboard. Now, that's a more expensive board, so of course this price can be lowered even. But over here, I have the least expensive Z370 motherboard on Newegg right now, along with the i5-8600K. And as you can see, even still, there's about a $100 price difference. So with at least a $100 difference between them, does it make sense to go ahead and get the overclocking motherboard, get the overclocking CPU? Well, let's take a look at how the 8400 compares to the 8700K. Steve over at Hardware Unboxed did a couple benchmarks here and released them just today. So let's see how those go. Looking at the two benchmarks that Steve did for us here today, uh, we can see the i7-8700 versus the i5-8400. We're looking at 110, 111 frames per second versus 104 frames per second. So we're looking at a six to seven frame per second difference. Now, interesting to note, there's literally no difference between the Z370 and the B360 motherboards. So there, that was something that some people were worried about, that the i5-8400 would clock lower on the cheaper boards. Apparently that is not the case. Moving on to Far Cry 5, we have 105, 106 versus 102 or 103. So the couple hundred megahertz difference here really isn't making up too much ground. We're only talking about two or three frames per second. Now under power consumption, we see a huge difference between the uh, Z370 motherboard and the B360. This is about a 30% difference here on the i5. And on the 8700, we're seeing a 23 watt difference. So that is pretty large reduction just due to the motherboard, since this is measured in total system watts. Now, when I was looking at those power consumption numbers, we were seeing the i5-8400 running under 100 watts on the B360 motherboard, and the i7-8700 uh, running at 153 watts, and those were just at stock speeds. And the difference that we're seeing in gaming is within single digit percentage points. So we're talking about a 50% increase in power consumption for five to 10 frames per second. Now granted that's at stock speeds, but it really begs the question and brought this up to me, is CPU overclocking even really worth it anymore? At least on the Intel side at this point. Because once you start overclocking, you just throw TDP and energy efficiency completely out the window and you start drawing even more power. Now, the reason why I showed the Z370 and i5-8600K price compared to the 8400 setup is because that's basically the bare minimum you need to get into Intel overclocking at this point. That extra $100 that it costs to just get you, what, 5, 10 frames per second, really could be used to mitigate the increased price in RAM or the increased price in GPUs. That's the reason why I said the i5-8400 was definitely a winner, and I really did not like the 8700K, because even if the uh, i5-8700 in those benchmarks 
was running at 5 gigahertz. So basically another 10% boost on top of what we were already seeing. It's not going to make that much of a difference in actual gaming. Now, let me be clear. There are those out there that overclocking is the main reason why they get into PCs at all. That's what they like to do. They like enjoy the tweaking. That actually is the hobby. But for PC gamers as a whole or in general, it's not really worth it in my opinion. I don't think the extra cost, the expense, the inefficiency uh, is actually worth it. You know, to really get those high overclocks on the 8700 or even an 8600K, you have to go through delitting. Then you have to tweak the system. And then, I mean, it's a lot of time. Now, there's, like I said, there's people that love that. But to me, there are many other things out there that you could use an extra 100 to even $200 on. I use the cheapest Z370, for example. A decent one's about $150. And that's not even going over the fact that you also need to get cooling for that. So you probably need like a $40 or $50 uh, water cooling kit at a minimum, uh, but most people will likely spend even more. With the i5-8400, Steve went ahead and tested it with the Intel stock cooler that it comes with, and it did not thermal throttle whatsoever because it's only a 65 watt CPU. So there's plenty of cooling potential in that tiny little heat sink that most of us throw away to actually handle that. And because you can't actually overclock whatsoever on the B360 or an H310 motherboard, it doesn't really matter. So in my opinion, that's definitely the much better value and that's the way I would recommend people go. Uh, you can get away with the H310, but you're going to get more benefits and features on the B360 motherboard. It will cost you a little bit more. But if you want features like USB 3.1 Type-C and things like that, it might be worth a couple of extra bucks to you. Now, I've talked mostly about Intel in this video, and it's because the new Ryzen 2000 series is coming out in just a couple of days. And AMD, at least at this point, it typically made sense to go ahead and and overclock those CPUs because you can get the 1600 or the 1700 for much cheaper than the 1600X or 1700X. But I recently picked up an R5 1600X and the reason why I did that was because there's no overclocking necessary on this CPU. And right now they're selling for maybe $10 more. I've seen a 1700X for about $10 more than a 1700 and I got this for about $10 more than a regular 1600. So with this guy, I didn't have to overclock. I just popped it in and it's already running at 3.9 gigahertz right off the bat, which on my 1700 that I had last year, uh, that I could only get up to 3.9 with massive voltages and typically left it at 3.8. So on the AMD side, it's kind of up in the air. We don't know how the Ryzen 2000 series is going to go, but at least on the current Ryzen system, uh, you might as well just buy the X CPUs and then you don't have to worry about overclocking at all. Now, it does cost you a couple extra bucks and you will have to buy a cooler with these. At least the uh, 2600X and 2700X will be coming with coolers and that helps keep their prices down a little bit more. It seems to me like on both sides, at least today, as of right now, overclocking just doesn't make a lot of sense unless you love it, unless it's your passion when you can get maximum AMD performance pretty much straight out of the box and you can get such value, you can get like 95, 90% of the performance of an 8700K for less than half the price basically. And the, the efficiency that you have in such a setup is amazing. So both sides of the aisle, they both have their options to where overclocking just doesn't make sense in today's schemes. We don't really know where things are going to be tomorrow. Uh, the Ryzen 2000 series, they might overclock really well. I think that they might, but we'll have to wait and see. And then at that point, those CPUs may be worth it. But at least on the Intel side, for gamers anyway, I just don't see it being worth the extra investment at this point. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think overclocking's just kind of going away? Uh, I mean, GPUs and stuff like that, there's plenty of headroom. Of course, we always want faster graphics. But with the higher core counts that we're getting and game engines being able to take advantage of those, it seems less and less important because we're less bottlenecked by the CPU. We're not stuck on quad cores anymore, thankfully. And it seems like that's alleviated most of the headroom. But let me know what you guys think 
in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. And if you're interested in picking up any of these parts, I'm going to go ahead and put links in the description uh, over to Amazon. You can pick those up and anything you buy. Uh, that actually help out the channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put up a poll in a couple of days and see what you guys think I should do with those funds and reinvest it into the channel. I was going to do a 2200G setup, but I'm thinking about possibly doing one or two other setups. And I'll get your guys' thoughts and see exactly what you guys think we should do with that. But for now, guys, that's all I've got. And I will catch you guys in the next video.